Hello, and welcome to the first and very possibly only edition of what is essentially an experiment. Uh, I have been solving the New York Times daily crossword puzzle for a number of years now. As you may have heard me mention on a podcast, if you were a listener to any of the many podcasts I recorded over about a decade, and I have recently, um, my life has changed in a number of ways. I've relocated to the United Kingdom, where I now live. And over the past few days, I was trying to think about what kind of content, I guess, I could make that would go out over the internet and be something that would be relatively sustainable and um, reasonable to produce. And I thought, well, I solve this crossword puzzle every day. Maybe I'll just use that essentially as an excuse to start making something and record myself doing it and put it out there and see if absolutely anybody at all has the slightest bit of interest in watching me do such a thing. I really I genuinely don't know how to predict. Uh, I think there's a reasonably good chance nobody will find that interesting. Um, but I'll probably try it a few times just in case to see uh, if this is the kind of thing that makes sense to do. It's as much for my benefit as anything else, just to get myself in the habit of actually doing something that I can put online. And um, this is a relatively, um, I guess, low risk way of doing that. So let's let's give it a shot. Um, it This wasn't intentional, but it turns out that I'm starting on a Monday. And if you are not familiar with the New York Times crossword puzzle, it increases in difficulty from Monday to Saturday. So Monday is the easiest solve, Saturday is the most difficult solve, and Sunday is uh, about a mid difficulty. I would think maybe about a Wednesday difficulty, but it is a much larger grid. So it typically actually, at least in my case, is the longest solve of the week. Uh, but Monday, not too hard. Um, oh, it'll be interesting actually to see. I've never, I've never narrated a crossword solve before. So I really have no idea if this is, if I'm going to be able to solve well in this situation. On Monday shouldn't be very difficult, but let's see if, um, if that proves to be the case here. Uh, let's, uh, no more preamble. Let's just, let's just see what happens. I'm also actually, sorry, a little bit more preamble. I'm not familiar with solving on the New York Times website. I have in the past only ever solved on the uh, iOS app, which is what I've been using for many years. So um, I did one puzzle, one historical puzzle on the site just to sort of slightly familiarize myself with it, but it, oops, but it is not my ordinary solving tool, but whatever. That's enough. Let's see. Okay. This is interesting. I already see that there is some kind of um, el extra element in this grid. It's actually not particularly common in a Monday puzzle, which tend to be relatively simple and straightforward. Um, often this is these sort of extra symbols are connected to the theme of a puzzle, which um, kind of a sub bit of subject matter that threads through a lot of the answers. Um, I don't know what to make of it yet, so we'll just we'll just see what happens when we get there. Uh, also, typically when I start solving a puzzle, I um, I often don't f do a lot of fills initially. I'll sort of go through the puzzle and uh, and and look at a bunch of the answers before doing any fills, um, unless I see some very easy ones. I actually haven't really been looking at these clues because I've been talking. This is obviously a new experience for me. But here I happen to see an organization with missions to Mars. I'm just going to say that's NASA. Um, and actually, since we're here, I just happened to notice this down clue, seven down, space, mater. I think that's Alma Mater, as in one's uh, former school. Um, let's just pick up what we left off after NASA. Put back in the suitcase. That is probably repack. 43,560 square feet. That's an interesting... Is that a hectare? I only say hectare because it would fit in this clue. I actually do not know what a hectare is, but now I'm sort of curious. 
I don't think it's going to be Hector. Let's just keep going for now. Prince who married Meghan Markle is Harry. Oops. Oops, you can tell I don't know what I'm doing with this tool here. Garden tool, tool with a long handle is a hoe. To heed is possibly to obey. Let's look at some of the crosses and see if that bears out. Place to store valuables when traveling. That's a hotel safe, I think. And that means we now have an O here, which bodes well for obey. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Out of kilter is awry. Angry shout to a miscreant. Usually with these longer clues, I tend to ignore them unless I happen to seize upon the answer out of nowhere. Um, Padre's sister, so this would be Spanish. The sister of a Padre would be a Tia. Sean Carter for Jay-Z and Tracy Morrow for Ice-T. Those are their real names. So now we've got these two parallel vertical clues. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can, um, you know, look at some of these uh, clues in between. Ready? Aim, fire. Service charge is a fee. Shape on a winding road is an S. Challenges for dry cleaners are stains. Oh, you can tell I really do not know what I'm doing. Actress Lohan of Mean Girls. That's Lindsay. Lindsay, I believe. And I'm, I'm essentially looking at here at the low-hanging fruit. I'm looking at these short clues that only have a couple letters remaining from what I've already filled in. Ugandan tyrant Edi Amin is what that would be. Employer of Nora O'Donnell. Um, Nora O'Donnell. I believe Nora O'Donnell is a journalist. Oh, I don't know who employs her. I'm going to guess it's going to be something news. And this seems like it should be CBS. I, let's look at some of the crosses to see if we can confirm that. This is make do. I think that would be cope. So I think the guess here of CBS is going to be correct. Sobriquet for Simone Bolivar. Sort of embarrassing. I feel like I should know this, but I don't. <laughs> so maybe I'll recognize it once we can fill in more. To be lenient, be lenient with. I think this is go easy on, which suggests that I misspelled Lindsay Lohan's name, which is extremely plausible. So let's say go easy on. There we go. Grand old Opry. I believe this is a venue. Grand old Opry music venue. Observation satellite. Now, I think this is this is going to be an idiomatic expression. I, I'm going to say this is eye in the sky. Now, with a with a more difficult day, I probably I, I would be less likely, I think, to take a stab on something like that. But on a Monday, I'll just go for it. A Yale collegiate is an Eli. They are known as Eli's, I think, after the founder of Yale. Eli Yale that might be correct. Peeved states are snits. If you are peeved, you are in a snit. Makes amends for is atones for. Fictional de detective Nero. I, I'm not familiar with this, but just based on these letters, Wolf, Nero Wolf sounds like the name of a detective. And again, in a Monday puzzle, I'm just going to go ahead and, and fill it in. And then immediately we can see declump as flower is to sift the flower. So we can go ahead and just stick that in there. Ares and Apollo to Zeus are sons of Zeus. Camrys and Corollas are Toyotas. Don't mention it. An electrified weapon is a taser. Uh, a maxi dress reaches the ankle. Fashion, um, synonym for fashion is style. So we can fill that. A blender setting, puree. Yale URL ender. So there's a, a callback to Yale, and that would be edu. Wide receiver, Beckham Jr. Now, I don't know this person, but based on the letters here, um, I very much suspect the name is Odell, because that's a name. And a place to buy gifts for kids is a toy shop. The Bronx or Brooklyn, informally, those are boroughs, informal spelling of which is B-O-R-O. -O. 
a bar mitzvah reading. Um, I assume this means a reading from the Torah, although it is entirely possible that this is a, an, there's another vocabulary word that is more specific than this that I don't know. So again, on a Monday, I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in. And, and if it turns out to be wrong, it'll be easy enough to correct later. Many a sacrifice play in baseball. Well, I have very limited baseball knowledge, but I've certainly heard people talk about bunts. So that's probably what this is. Facial feature of Disney's Goofy would be buck teeth. Just occurred to me, I haven't yet thought much about this theme, but um, going back to it, I see here that I, I, in other words, the word, the shaded word in this clue is a homophone for the letter I that is in the circle. So I wonder if that is going to um, bear out. And here I could see that L would be a homophone for the letter L. And uh, that that's confirmed here with this down clue abilities. And then also L Libertador, I assume, is what this is going to be. What can barely give a hoot? So this has a question mark, which means it is sort of a jokey or punish answer. And so I'm going to say that as owlet. A baby owl can barely give a hoot because they don't yet know how to hoot well. Tompolipic prizes are golds. A swollen mark is a welt. So let's look at this. Let's look at this clue again and see if this can help us at all. So presumably this will be a letter that this spells out and it starts with a W. So I suspect that's going to be Y because Y is pronounced as the letter Y. Angry shout to a miscreant. Why you, presumably? I mean, it starts with Y-O, so I'm assuming it's you. And then, yes, fed a lied to is cued. You feed a line to someone, you cue them. Um, let me look back at this. Why you... Presumably, this, this is going to be a word for rascal or something like that, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Let's look at this one. Marine inhabitant, that's an animal, not a plant, despite what it is called. Well, it's a marine inhabitant, so it's from the sea, and that actually works out well because C sounds just like the letter C. Um, but I don't know what the rest of it's, what the rest of it is. Well, we can use these um, new letters for some crosses. Snap tra Snapchat transmission for short is a pick, presumably. A low opera voice. I assume this is basso. So this is presumably not hectare at this point. 43,560 square feet does not appear to be hectare. So it's good that I didn't go with my intuition on that one. A tiny drink, though, is a sip, so we can fill that. Have a home-cooked meal. When you have a home-cooked meal, you eat in. So eight in. One thing that is always good to bear in mind is that you always have to match the tense of the clue. You have to match the tense and you have to match whether it's plural or singular. So this is had a home-cooked meal. So it is eight in as opposed to eat in in the present. This is this is the kind of thing that you can trip up on extremely easily. It happens all the time uh, with me, I find. Negative media coverage in brief. So this was the very first clue and I sort of just skipped right over it. But now that I have all these letters, it's very easy to see that it is bad PR. Vulgar as some humor. Some vulgar humor is raunchy. Curtain. A curtain is a drape. Ah, here we go. 43,560 square feet is one acre. Not something I would have known, but sounds right now that I see the letters. This is actor Elwis, which is Carrie from The Princess Bride and probably other things. So a marine inhabitant that's an animal, not a plant, despite what it's called, is a sea cucumber. Okay. So that's a thing, again, that I've heard of. but I can't say I know very much about what it is. Dull brown as hair. I think that's what people mean when they say mousy hair, although I don't entirely know why. I guess mice are sort of a dull brown. That seems like a harsh thing to say about someone's hair. 
Olio D. Blank Bread Dip at a Trattoria. Boy, I feel like I should know this, but I but I don't off the top of my head. But a triangular sail, I assume, is a jib because it's what sailors like the cut of, and it must be something associated with sailing for that reason. An undergraduate's declaration is a major. They declare their major. Cheese on toast dish. That is a rare bit, a Welsh rare bit, sort of a sort of a, a sandwich with a kind of a melty cheese thing on top. Olio di oliva. So this is olive oil, presumably. Let's just see here. Attire for the Mario the Mario Brothers or the Minions. Um, that'll be overalls. So that does confirm that suspicion. Ah, here we go. So we're back to this angry shot to a miscreant, which now really looks like why you little an angry shout left incomplete. Such is the rage of the shouter. A butter unit is a pat. A nightclub is a cabaret. Co-star of TV's mod, I believe, is B. Arthur. Consumer Protection Organization. I guess that's the Better Business Bureau. Water in French is O E A U. That when you see that F R abbreviation, that means French. Um, I don't know why they don't just say French because it's sort of misleading actually. Because typically, when there is an abbreviation and a clue, that usually means the answer is an abbreviation. That doesn't apply to foreign languages, and I. And I I never really thought about it till just now, but that doesn't really make any sense. It's a little inc inconsistent with the um, the abbreviation convention. And then this is uh, another French reference here, Arc de Triomphe in Paris. And that's it. So that was 1356. That was a lot longer than a Monday puzzle usually takes me, but I guess that's what the narration will do. That is fine. No worries at all. And I'm up to an 832 day streak. So <laughs> this reveals one of the reasons I decided to do this is I figured, well, I have gone 832 days, which is more than two years straight, solving this puzzle every single day. And what the streak means is that I did it within the you know the 24 hour period of the puzzle's release or whatever it is. It's around that around 24 hours. Um, and so I figured I'm doing this anyway, I'm trying to figure out something I can do online. Why not this? I'm doing it every day. Let's just do it. But I, it just occurs to me, never really looked at this, um, never really looked at this theme. And I, I don't entirely, is it just that we have these words that correspond to the pronunciation of letters? Is that really it? So C, C, Y, Y, L, L, I, I. It's a little bit low effort. Usually, Usually these these themes will sort of tie together in some way. And this doesn't really seem to. What does it add up to? What does it mean, Will Shorts, editor of the New York Times crossword? What does it mean, Peter Gordon, constructor of this particular crossword? What are you getting at here? I suppose it's a Monday, so they didn't... Um, just that little bit of fun, I guess, was considered to be enough. Usually it's something that ties it together, even if it's nothing more than the title of the puzzle. But I don't see a title of this puzzle. Now, I don't know where to look for a title on this website. Let me just quickly load up the app and see if there is a title of this crossword. There's not. There's no title. That's it. Okay, so the theme is just some words also... <laughs> sound like letters of the alphabet. That is fine. It's a Monday. Okay, well, I hope that um, was interesting to somebody somewhere. I have a suspicion it won't be, but I'll, I'll do these a few more times just to see if, uh, if there's anything interesting about it. And if not, well, no harm, no foul. So thank you for watching me solve the New York Times crossword for Monday, July 5th, 2021. And I will very possibly see you tomorrow.